Today we're going to do something very quick and simple and I'm going to show you how to use the puppet tool in After Effects. So right now I just have a composition with a red background and then there's a dinosaur that's on a layer by itself. Up here I've gone to the puppet pin tool and that's just this little thumbtack looking thing and to use it I'm going to click on the dinosaur's body <clears throat> as if I was marking like the joints in its skeleton. Oops, I'm going to undo that one. No, I'm going to leave that one there. It's fine. Um, knee. Foot. Joint. 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 Uh, neck. Head. For the tongue. Alright, so <clears throat> I probably should have picked a more clear example, like maybe a normal human skeleton, but this should get the basic idea across. So, the, the great thing about the pin tool is that each of these points are automatically animated. So, <clears throat> when I scrub through the timeline and move them, it'll automatically pick the pace, uh, places in between. So, for example, right now this is where the dino is at a zero second mark. Let me go down to the one second mark and at the one second point I'm gonna have his his foot just move forward now watch if I scrub through you'll see that After Effects is animating the space in between doop 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 so, if that one's there at the start, let's see, if he's walking, that means the other, f he's going to walk, be right about, so this one's going to come back. So bring him up, bring him back. So, if I... It almost looks like he's walking, right? So now, if I want to actually make it look like he was walking, I'm going over here under the transform tools, and I'm trying to find those individual pins. And this can get really confusing simply because each of these pins has its own position at certain times in the timeline. Uh, in this case, we are only animating that pin, that pin, that pin, this pin, and this pin. All right. So if I wanted to keep repeating these movements, I can just highlight these pins. All right. So they're all highlighted. I can go to Edit, Copy. I'm going to move to the two-second mark. Edit, paste. So now look. So if I scrub through, it'll continue to walk. You know, I can go then to the four minute or four second mark and paste again. And I just did a control V there. Six second mark, control V. Eight second mark, control V. And then, oh my god, we got a walking dinosaur with very, very little effort. Um, it really didn't take much to make him walk. Let me see if I can go to full full resolution real quick, see if you actually see what it looks like. Nah, it's still burning it out. Sorry. My bad. Bad RAM. Uh, so that, that, in effect, is, is how the puppet tool works. Uh, whatever you animate and move, it'll fill in the spaces in between. And it makes things like walking, flying, or little animations really, really simple to do. Another thing that this can be useful for is, so right now we animate the legs, right? Well, don't forget, we can still animate the whole dinosaur. Let me switch back to my mouse, little pointer selection tool. I'm going to mark the position of the dino at the start. I'm just going to drag him off camera. I'm going to go, what is this, nine seconds? 
I'm just using that because that's where I stopped animating the legs before. I'm going to drag them over here. So then if I play them back, let me go, let me go half. Let me see if I can get to render for you guys. This may not work. Uh, composition, preview, ramp preview. Yeah, my, my RAM is fried right now. I have a lot of stuff running. Um, but if I scrub through real quick, you'll notice it almost looks like he's walking across. Now, I could uh, easily adjust the position uh, or the position animations, uh, maybe easy ease in, easy ease out, or maybe have him speed up at some places and slow down at others just so it's not as consistent. But you get the basic idea of how using the puppet tool you can easily make puppets walk and move and do things. So there you go.